Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to look at uh, how we can use persistent storage or persistent volumes in uh, K3D. So we've been looking at K3S and K3D in the last few videos. So K3S is uh, a lightweight Kubernetes distribution from Rancher. And then we saw K3D, which is uh, running K3S in Docker containers. And then we saw how to uh, do a quick ingress resource, um, how we can uh, expose our services through ingress and so on. So in this video, we can, uh, we are going to look at how we can use persistent volumes, all right? So we will be using K3D because it's basically running Kubernetes nodes as Docker containers. Uh, we can mount a host volume inside the Docker containers, and then we can use that as a host path in, um, for uh, inside our pod when we want to use a persistent volume. So we will be looking at all that in this video. Okay, so I don't have any uh, clusters at the moment, K3D list, I don't have anything. So before doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a directory on my host machine. So let's say sudo make there slash Q. So slash Q, so that's the directory that I'm going to mount inside every Docker container, which are Kubernetes nodes. Um, I'm also going to change the ownership of slash cube to my uh, user account because I'm running, I'll be running all the Docker containers as myself, Venkat N. So I'm changing the ownership so that uh, the Docker containers and the pods uh, we are going to launch inside the containers can write to this directory slash cube. Okay, so we've got our thing ready. So k3d create, so we know how to create a cluster k3d create minus minus workers. So this is going to create a cluster with two worker nodes and one master node. So I'm going to pass an extra option here, minus minus volume. So it binds my host volume, host directory slash cube inside the containers under slash cube. Okay, so once we do that, and I'm going to run that export command. Okay, we need to wait for like a few seconds and then it should be good. Okay, so that's done. kubectl version minus minus shot. 1.17.3 kubectl get nodes. Everything is ready. Docker ps. So that's uh, the master node, master Docker container, and we have the two worker nodes, which are again Docker containers. So we have three Docker containers, and if we uh, log into these three Docker containers, it should have mounted slash cube inside the container as well. So we have slash cube. So I'm just going to create a temporary file, touch slash cube, hello world, ls slash cube. Okay, so I'm doing all these on my host machine. So now inside the container, if you look inside the container, we should have this uh, slash cube directory mounted and we should be able to see that file inside the uh, cont individual containers. So let's do that. Docker exec. So that's the container name for the master node, which is this one here. And we are doing this command ls slash cube. There we go. So which means slash cube is mounted inside our container and we can see the hello world file. So it's all working fine. Let's also do this uh, check on the worker node as well. Default worker zero. We have that hello world file and worker one. Cool, so we have all these files now. So now we can use this uh, directory inside the Docker containers as a persistent volume. So let's see how we can do that. Um, for that, I'm going to clone my Kubernetes repository, git clone Kubernetes repository, and then cd to Kubernetes and then to YAMLs, ls, so I've got loads of uh, YAML files here. If you do just ls here, I've got, so these were the uh, YAML files manifest that I've been using for all my videos. Uh, but for this video, what we are interested in is these three YAML files. So we have a persistent volume, we have a persistent volume claim, and we have a pod template that uses that persistent volume claim. Okay, let's uh, take a look at one of each one of them. First, let's take a look at the persistent volume. Okay, so kind is persistent volume. The name of the persistent volume is pv-hostpath. Um, storage class name is manual, which is important. Uh, whatever storage class name you give here, you need to give the same storage class name in your persistent volume claim. And uh, we are defining a capacity storage of one gig, access mode, read write once. 
and host path. So the type of storage is host path path is slash cube. So this volume will be created. Uh, so slash cube will be used as a volume. Uh, slash cube will be available on all the Docker containers because that's we mounted that from our host machine. Okay, so that's persistent volume. And if we take a look at the persistent volume claim, so kind is persistent volume claim, name is PVC host path. Storage class name is manual, which is same as the one we defined here. Access mode, read write once, and we are requesting a storage of 100 meg. Okay, so that's simple. And now let's take a look at the pod specification. Right, so we have this pod, kind is pod, name of the pod is busybox, and we are defining a volume called host volume. And the volume is basically from the persistent volume claim. The claim name is pvc hostpod uh, That's the name of the persistent volume claim we uh, have in this YAML file. And it's a simple container. We are running a busy box container and the command is just a, a shell command asleep for 10 minutes. And then we have a volume mounts option here. Name of the volume is host volume which is defined here host volume which is coming from a persistent volume claim and we are mounting it inside the container under slash my data okay so we have three manifests here one for persistent volume one for persistent volume claim and then we've got a pod specification we're going to deploy all these three files kubectl get all so we don't have anything at the moment let's deploy them kubectl create minus f Specifying all the YAML files here, minus F, persistent volume, minus F, persistent volume claim, minus F, and the busybox manifest file. Okay, so that's created. And now if I take a look at kubectl get pv, come on, pvc, and you can see here that's the persistent volume of size 1 gig, um, read write once, and the status is available, storage class is manual. And that's the persistent volume claim we've created. Name of the persistent volume claim is PVC hostpod. Status is pending. Okay, let's uh, take a look at that again. Run that command again. Now we can see it's bound. So we've got the persistent volume. The status is bound. And it is bound to that persistent volume claim, PVC hostpod, which is here, PVC hostpod. Status bound, and we can see it's bound to this persistent volume, which is pv dash hostpod. So our persistent volume and persistent volume claims are looking okay. kubectl get pods. We have our busy box container that's running fine. Let's log into the uh, busy box container. kubectl exec minus it for interactive login to the container that's busy box and we are running the command shell. Okay, so now we are inside the container and cd to my data. That's cool. So we've got the, because of the volume mounts, uh, we've mounted slash cube from the worker node, which is the Docker container, to slash my data inside the container. And if I do ls, and you can see the hello world file that we created from our host machine. Okay, so let's uh, create another file. Touch another file. And there we go. So we've got uh, two files now, and I'm going to delete this part kubectl delete pod bc box okay the pod is gone kubectl get pods we don't have any pods kubectl get pv and pvc we still have the persistent volume claim and persistent volume the pod that was using this persistent volume has been deleted now we can create another pod kubectl create minus f bc box pod is created kubectl get pods that's already running kubectl exec ls slash my data cool so we have those two files so that's from the persistent volume so we've got a way to persist the data uh, from one part to another okay right um, what else kubectl get all let's try and delete everything kubectl delete minus f so we are deleting the pod we are deleting the persistent volume climb and we are also deleting the persistent volume. All right, everything got deleted. Kubectl get pods, nothing. Kubectl get pv, 
pvc we don't have anything let's also delete our cluster k3d delete if i do k3d list so that's the uh, default cluster we have k3d delete so that's all gone and if you look at slash cube we still have those files left behind we can delete that okay cool um that's all i wanted to show you for this video please give this a try and uh, if you've got any questions let me know i'll be happy to help and i will see you all in my next video bye bye